All right, I can see that you made it this far. Good job. Now we're going to start working on the actual web scraper and using the HTML agility pack framework. So start off by opening Visual Studio and we're going to create a WPF application. So once Visual Studio is open, file, new, project, and we're going to select the WPF application. We're going to name this web scraper. Your project should look something like this. And at the bottom, you can see that we have the sample window. This will take care of all the design for the application. And then we have the actual project window up here and the solution explorer to the right and the properties down to the right. So I'm going to click this button right here, which is a vertical split. We're going to see the sample code on the right hand side while we see the designer on the left hand side. So I'm going to hold control and scroll down and that makes us zoom out. All right, so to make it easier for you to read, I'm actually going to hold control and scroll up on the SAML window. I'm going to move the, the design window a bit to the left so we can see the SAML a bit more. Now, what we can start off by doing is we can change the actual title here on the window. So it's going to be the title property up here. And instead of main window, we can put mm, my awesome web scraper. Perfect. All right, so we're going to start off by creating two row definitions within our grid right here. So let's start off by doing grid dot row definition. Perfect. And we're going to put two row definitions inside here. One having a fixed size and the other one's going to be kind of dynamic. So let's do row definition. Mm, we're going to make it self closed. I'm going to put the height to 50. We're going to control C, control V. And this one is going to have the height of star, which pretty much fills up the rest of it. What this allows us to do is split the application up the design into two parts. So two rows, as you see, this top part being it's kind of hard to see. I'm actually going to demonstrate it with a background color uh, quite soon. But as you can see, it splits it up into two divisions right here. Once we're done with that, we're actually going to create two grids within here. We're going to create the first grid like so. And then we're going to create another one. Actually, we're going to start with the first one. So we only have to keep track of one. So let's uh, remove the white space like so. And we're actually going to put the row for this one to you see grid dot row zero. Since it's index based, we are using zero as the first number. And just to demonstrate, we can actually put a background in here. So a background property of let's say green. As you can see, it's split up into two parts. This is being the first part and it's green. We can remove that because I don't really like the looks of that. And we're actually going to start adding some, some controls into this. All right, to start off, we're actually going to add a dock panel. And that's going to make sense in just a moment to why I'm using that instead of, let's say, a stack panel or another grid. We're using a dock panel because it's easier to dock the controls. All right, so let's start off by adding the menu control like so within this menu control we want a menu item with the header of file so header file oop, not filer file as you can see it's one of these like the menu is the, the menu that we have up here that says like file edit view etc and now we want to add the actual item inside so let's add a menu item again this is kind of like the xml because this this is xaml so it has like you know uh, a parent property, a, a parent element, and then a child one as well. So let's create another menu item within this one, a self-closing one. Header of, um, let's call this one export. We got to be able to export the, the actual data that we scrape later. All right, that's looking good so far. Now, underneath our menu, we want to create a button. I'm going to make this a self-close button as well. So button and self-closed. Now we're going to add some properties or attributes. Uh, in C-sharp, it's actually properties. So let's start off with a name. The name is going to be button scrape because this is the button that we're going to click whenever we want to scrape. And we also want a dock panel, the dock to the right, because we want to dock it to the right. And then it's kind of wide. So let's, let's change the width of it. So the width is going to be mm, let's do like 50 i think it's going to change whenever we do because we got to set a height as well if i do 25 yeah let's make it a bit you know 
wider and not so so square. let's make it a rectangle and not a square this is all design preferences you can change this uh, design to whatever you want and you seem fit so let's add some text to the button we do that by adding the content property and this is going to say scrape it's kind of hard to see there we go let's zoom that over there all right now that we have some text on the button let's um, let's leave it like that for now and let's add the text box that we're because we're going to be able to add a link that we want to scrape and we click scrape and it's going to scrape that link and parse it into a data grid so let's go ahead and add text box and this one's also going to be self-closed i can remove that one that i created down there and let's do doc panel dot doc let's see we're gonna dock this to um, to the bottom if you're still unsure on how dock panels work there are great tutorials on google that you can look up that shows how the the dock panel itself works that's kind of a bit out of the uh, out of the scope of this tutorial but uh, yeah let's keep on going so we gotta add a name to this as well so we can identify it in the code later on let's call this text box tb short for text box and call it uh, page so tb page is going to get a height property of 20 and let's see let's add some some text to it right now so we can you know so it looks a bit better perfect and uh, let's see what this looks like right now all right it's starting to look better i don't like the that it's this close so let's uh, add some margin to these two controls so uh, let's start off with this one let's do a margin of uh, it, it goes from left top right and bottom so zero on the left axis then the top one is zero and then 10 to the right and zero so that changes the button so it comes out a bit as you can see we need some spacing it's personal preference again Let's do the same here so it's not, you know, stuck to the button. Let's do margin, uh, top, no, left, top, <laughs> right, uh, and bottom. There we go, perfect. And that's already starting to look a lot better. You can click F5 to debug the application to see what it looks like. It might take a little bit longer the first time you start it up. And uh, there we go, starting to look pretty nice and also as you can see we have the the file menu with the export button now it these buttons don't really do anything yet because we still gotta add the code behind so let's do that before we do that let's add the grid with a second control in it as well so let's create a new grid underneath our previous grid that we created right here without uh, outside of the scope from that one we're going to create a new grid and within this grid well first of all let's actually uh, assign the grid row so that's going to be one now you can see that it it switched the focus from up here to down there if i put it on zero you can see that it's up top put on one we're now in this one so let's within this we're actually just going to add a data grid oh a data grid real quick that's going to present the data to us so data grid perfect and uh, this can actually be self-closed as well because we're only going to data bind it we're not going to add anything special to it besides the item source all right so once that's done we can actually start generating the events i would do commands for the controls instead of events for mvvm purposes but that again is outside the scope of this course so we're actually going to do events so the click event for the button we're going to generate a new event and let's see for the text box uh, we don't need anything but for the menu item export we actually need a click event as well so let's create a new click event perfect within this you can see that we in the in the back side of the code if you don't have this for some reason popping up then you can look at the project explorer to the right and if you f click the the main window that saml and drop down the hierarchy you can double click this CS file right here and it should prompt you with this.